So here's the question. Should George Washington and Abraham Lincoln be removed from school names? Can you believe we're having this discussion? We knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And there are those who want to label this as cancel culture. It certainly fits into that description. I told you I don't like the name cancel culture because to me, it immediately puts everything in one light with a broad brush. And in many in many cases, what we should be doing instead of broad brushing it, oh, and explaining it away, oh, that's just cancel culture, is we ought to be discussing it. And again, explaining why we disagree. And I think that these are valuable discussions that we need to be having. So I, I hate labels. You know that I hate those labels because it just explains things away. But why are we talking about this? Well, if you didn't hear, San Francisco is all about getting rid of these names. In the spring of 2018, the Board of Education passed a resolution to establish a blue ribbon panel to review San Francisco public school names. They recommended the changing of 46 named campuses, and now the board has voted to commit to renaming public schools, including George Washington and Abraham Lincoln High Schools, after officials deemed them and other prominent historical figures, including current figure Diane Feinstein, unworthy of the honor. Okay. So now, uh, Ms. Casco, roll call vote. After months of controversy, the San Francisco School Board voted 6-1 to one this week in favor of renaming 44 school sites in the city with new names that have no connection to slavery, racism, or similar criteria. So the wider message is we're contributing to condemning racist symbols and we're also learning about that work and ensuring that our youth is a part of changing that. The names to be reconsidered include George Washington, who owned slaves, Abraham Lincoln due to his treatment of Native Americans, and California Senator Dianne Feinstein, because as mayor in the 80s, she replaced a vandalized Confederate flag that was part of a long-standing flag display in front of City Hall. I think more people should be in the room to have that discussion. I think, uh, you know, instead of just a small group of people deciding for the rest of the school district, Community members, parents, and people from schools, even students, should be in that room discussing whether they should get their name changed for that school. San Francisco Mayor London Breed released a statement saying in part, quote, What I cannot understand is why the school board is advancing a plan to have all these schools renamed by April when there isn't a plan to have our kids back in the classroom by then. Critics also called the process rushed with a lack of information on the basis for each recommendation. In one instance, the committee didn't know whether Roosevelt Middle School was named after Theodore or Franklin Delano. And they say the decision was made with little to no input from historians. I think there's a danger in applying 21st century moral standards to uh, historical figures of one or two centuries ago. Uh, we expect everyone to be perfect. We expect everyone to be enlightened. But uh, an enlightened person of 1865 is not the same as an enlightened person of 2020. This in no way cancels or erases history. We understand that this is something that will always be known and understood, but it does shift from, again, upholding them and, and honoring them. And these opportunities is a great way to have that conversation about our past and, and have an opportunity to uplift new, new voices. The school board members say the district is capable of pursuing multiple priorities at the same time and have insisted that renaming is timely and important, given the country's reckoning with a racist past. Some parents argued that current names mean students are wearing school sweatshirts with the names of slave owners, including Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and James Madison. And the school board says new names for the schools will be considered in the spring. Members are encouraging public input. Can you believe, can you imagine some kids are wearing George Washington hoodies, Abraham Lincoln t-shirts? How horrific is that? Can you believe it? Oh. Uh, my response on this one is, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. And you heard that individual in that video clip say exactly what I believe applies here. And that is that you cannot heap the understanding and enlightenment of today on people back in their day. You just can't do it. And if you're going to do it and then remove all of the good that they did because they didn't have that certain enlightenment that you're looking for, what's left? What is left in in our society? This is Tammy on Facebook. I think the Jim Crow era has really distorted how we see our American history now. I agree with all the statues put up in that time to be taken down. The great thing about this country is it's unfinished and ever evolving to make a more perfect union. I agree with you. When we talk about the statues, if it's a statue of a Confederate president or a Confederate general, these are people who seceded and became enemies of the country. That's very different than a statue of the greatest president of our history. A man who without his efforts, there would be no United States of America. George Washington largely can be credited as the single person who is most responsible for everything that we have and enjoy today. Everything. And here you have, they don't want Abraham Lincoln because how he treated Native Americans. But at the same time, Abraham Lincoln, what did he do for slavery? It's like, do, do we have no ability to balance these things? And I think that is my core frustration here is what do we lose in chasing these people out? Now, you heard one of the school board members saying, we're still going to learn about them. We're just not going to honor them. Well, I think these individuals should be honored. We can have an individual discussion about each one. But I let me ask it this way, and this this may be inflammatory. I don't know. Which one of us who is against slavery today, I'm assuming every single person listening to this show right now, is against slavery? Can we all agree we're all anti-slavery? Okay. Which one of us can say for sure that if we lived during George Washington's time that we would be anti-slavery? Which one of us can honestly make that claim? Do you know that George Washington received his first slaves, I think, on his 16th birthday? That was the present from his parents. When you're raised into a slaveholding household, when you're taught that those individuals are not the same, It would be very difficult to break free from that. Now, people did. But it took a long, long time. Which one of us can say we would have had this great enlightenment? I I think that this is a huge mistake when it comes to George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Thomas Jefferson. I think what you ought to do is keep the names and keep the honor. But also be very, uh, very upfront about their mistakes as well. That it's important to understand that the heroes of our society were flawed, flawed men. It's important to understand that this country was born with some pre-existing conditions that were pretty ugly. Not just towards slaves, but towards Native Americans and to women. But it's also important to understand that although Thomas Jefferson had slaves, mistreated slaves, had inappropriate relations with slaves, his writings in the Declaration of Independence are perhaps some of the most important words ever written and are probably most important 
into the eventual freeing of the slaves and the current modern day fight for equality for all people. And to even have to engage in a discussion about what Abraham Lincoln did for the slaves would be, I mean, do we even have to have that discussion? I think that this is a huge mistake. I think that when we honor any, anytime we prop somebody up, it's important to teach and to remember their flaws. That that should be part of well-rounded education. But you take these people out of history, we don't exist. Our nation doesn't exist. Our values don't exist. It's all gone. What do you think? Jacob says, hey, at least they're renaming Diane Feinstein School. Yeah, I guess there is that. <laughs> Matthew says, just ridiculous and a waste of taxpayer money. I know. Can you imagine renaming like 46% of their schools? What that's going to take in signage, in, uh, in stationery, in everything. Uh, Jacob says, this changes a lot. What do you do with currency? Tammy says they were very enlightened for their time. Orion says, I've heard it said before, the past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. I think that's very well said. That's very well said. And we're not talking about propping up just some random people here. We're talking about would you remove them? I think it's a good experiment. You've removed their name from school. Let's say you remove their name from history. What happens? Take them out of the timeline. And what happens? I really think that these decisions are made by people who have not taken the time. And are not willing to take the time to get to know these individuals and what they really believed and what they really fought for and to put themselves back in that. It's, it's one of the things we can't do. We can't ever put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, but we can say if it was us, if I received slaves on my 16th birthday, I would have said, no, thank you. <sighs> Tammy says, how did we get here without them? I agree. Matthew says, yes, let's forget our history so we're not doomed to repeat it. That's how that saying goes, right? <laughs> yeah, it's something like that, Matthew. <laughs> it's definitely something like that. Again, you know, there's certain figures in history where I think the discussion is worthy. I think it's worthy of discussing Confederate monuments. I think that that's a worthy discussion to have because you have to ask what were their contributions? Uh, why are we celebrating them? Those are all fair questions. But when it comes to, uh, let me see, there's uh, there. I have a list here. So 44 San Francisco public schools. This was a six to one vote. They are removing names that honored historical figures with direct or broad ties to slavery, oppression, racism, or the subjugation of human beings. In addition to Washington and Thomas Jefferson, former presidents who owned slaves, the list includes uh, naturalist John Muir, Spanish priest uh, Junipero Serra, American Revolution patriot Paul Revere, and Francis Scott Key, composer of the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, on the list paul says presentism is a logical flaw again celebrate these people celebrate everything good that they did because it was so good that they're the reason that we're here but don't ignore the bad make that part of it and when you when you describe our long history with uh with racial issues 
from slavery on forward. These are key players in that. And they made choices and did things that eventually helped resolve the issue. Were they perfect? No. In fact, you look at some of the things they did and you're just kind of like, really? That's pretty bad in today's world. They didn't live in today's world, did they? Robin says, I think the short-sighted view of this is that we are not taking in the whole body of the work of Washington and Lincoln. It's very difficult to compare their work to the Confederates. That's not a balanced comparison. I agree with you. It's, again, that's why I don't like the term cancel culture. Because to me, there are discussions that are worthy to be had. This discussion is one that needs to be had. But we need people to recognize and understand the impact of their choices. You think about all of these kids and all of these schools that are going to watch the construction teams come in and they're going to watch the name George Washington come off the walls. And they're going to be like, why is George Washington coming off the walls? And then you're going to talk about all the bad things that George Washington did. And why he's not worthy to be on the on the school walls. To me, it, oh, just the, the whole image of that, it's like stuff out of a movie. You know, it's like when uh, it's like when Voldemort finally gets control of of Hogwarts. <laughs> Sorry, that's the first thing that jumped in my head. <laughs> uh, Tammy says, "Look at the growth from Washington to Lincoln. Maybe not fast enough, but progress nonetheless, and their contributions to that progress." I mean, I think, and I think it's a good test. Would we be in the same place we are in today, right now, with the racial progress that has been made? Not that there isn't a ton more work to be done. I believe there is. Would we be as advanced as we are right now if you take Thomas Jefferson out of the timeline? Think about that. I believe that because of the writings of Thomas Jefferson, that the effort to free the slaves happened faster. And that although he himself could not practice the terms that he wrote, that that phraseology, all men are created equal, endowed by their creator, with inalienable rights, that his pen caused the movement to go that much faster. And I think you're right. I think, Robin, that word short-sighted is exactly right. And Tammy, you're right. You take them out of the timeline, uh, we may be in much worse of a situation. Very hard, I think, to have an objective discussion when you say we're not going to honor them, but we will talk about them. I believe that these men deserve to be honored. And I'm very grateful for these men. I'm very grateful for what they wrote. I'm grateful for what they did. And I've made it an effort to teach my children about these individuals and I spend a considerable amount of my time learning about them, emulating them, and trying to make myself better as a result of them. All the while trying to learn from their mistakes. But who am I to say? That if I was born in the same era, that I would have some... <laughs> some level of enlightenment that they didn't. I just don't think you can say that. Any other comments about the removing of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln from schools in San Francisco? I it, We clearly all agree here that this is pretty outrageous. So why don't we do this? I've got one more segment prepared for you. This one is just uh, news stories that you might have seen videos things that you may have missed they might make you laugh they might 
make you sad. They might make you go, hmm. That's CNC music factory, right? Things that make you go, hmm. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, oh, one last comment from Tommy, Tammy. Those words, those words make us better people. Trying to live up to that for our fellow Americans and frankly, the world. I agree with you. Totally agree with you.